Hi everyone, my name is Kaylee and welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. Okay guys, I know this video is a day late. I currently have a little bit of a cough and allergies and yesterday I had a sty. So my health has literally been a shit show. So sorry this video is late, but I did wanna say one thing. I know a lot of you guys have been asking for my skincare routine, so I'm gonna put that at the end of the video. Also in today's story time, I'm going to be doing not only my makeup, but a little bit of self care also because the story is going to be too long for me to just do my makeup in it because I'm not really trying to do a full makeup look considering the fact that my thigh is not yet healed. But yeah, without further ado, I'm going to bring you guys up close. There we go. Okay, so my quick usual little rundown before we get into today's story time. For most of the video, I'll be looking in this direction because my mirror's over here and I would like to see what I'm doing. I do tell these story times in a first person point of view. If you don't like that, then you can leave. And these story times are sent in by anonymous people. Oh God, I feel like I'm gonna have an asthma attack after that one. Okay, so a little trigger warning before we get into today's story time. There are talks of um, suicide in this story. It's not really um, like gruesome. It's just that the word suicide pops up a little bit. So if that makes you in any way feel uncomfortable, feel free to exit out of this video and go check out one of my other story times. Okay, so story time about why you should never date your best friend's ex-boyfriend even though they said it was okay. That was a very long title. Anyway, so a little background information. I was 17 and a senior in high school. But we're going to rewind a little bit back to my freshman year of high school and we're going to call my best friend Melanie. Melanie and I had also met our freshman year of high school. So I was working at our local movie theater whenever she came in one day for an interview and she got the job which at the time I wasn't surprised obviously because I don't know this girl from a hole in the wall. And her and I pretty much had all of the same shift because they were making me train her, which I didn't mind, okay, because I was like one step below being a freaking manager. So I felt like if anybody was going to teach her, she should learn from the best, AKA me. Well, after like a week of training her, and I mean training her, okay, I thought that she would be good to be left on her own. You know, I mean, I taught her everything that I could teach her, you know, like the whole week, the whole week I pretty much was wiping her ass and she had been following me around like a freaking puppy. Like anywhere I went, she went to. Like if I went to the bathroom, she was waiting outside the stall for me for me to teach her the next thing. Well, the one night my sister had a dance recital and I had to leave work early so that way I could make it there. So I asked Melanie if she was okay to watch the theater, like not the theater, she wasn't gonna be there alone but watch the front by herself, AKA getting the popcorn and yeah, literally just like getting food for people. And she said that she was good. She said she knew how to work everything. You know, she was super confident in herself. So she would be fine. I even offered to call in someone who said that they would come in if Melanie needed help. But like I said, she said that she was fine. So I was like, all right, whatever. I mean, I left the number there though, you know, on the counter. It was kind of like a sticky note that literally said, hey, I know you said you were fine, but if you're having trouble, here's blah, blah, blah's number. And I made sure that everything was organized for her because you know, throughout the day, things get messy, things get misplaced, and I didn't want her to have any trouble whatsoever. And after I do that, I head to my sister's dance recital, and her dance recital is about like 30 minutes away, and it was gonna be like an hour long. So as soon as I get to the destination where my sister's dance recital is being held, my manager calls me, and as soon as I answer the phone, he is flipping the fuck out, okay? Like he is having an episode over the phone. He's like, where are you? You need to get back to the theater right now. I don't know what you were thinking, leaving the new girl alone whenever it's only her second week working here, which is weird because on my second week, my manager left me alone for the whole day. Well, then I asked him what happened and he was like, apparently there were too many customers and she got super overwhelmed and she left. She just left. So now I see the problem here and not only did she leave? But people also started jumping over the counter and getting themselves 
free popcorn, free drinks, free candy, free Slurpees. And yeah, the whole nine yards. So this was just so fucking great. You know, I was like literally that close to being a fucking manager. And Melanie has to go and screw it up. So he's like, you better get your ass back to that theater or you're fucking fired. So now I'm super pissed off because I literally told Melanie that if she needed help, dude, just call me. Or call Abigail, which was the girl who literally said that she would come in and help if Melanie was having issues. I don't, I don't think it can get easier than that. And then my manager literally calls me back again to literally complain more and just be like, you know, I'm so freaking disappointed in you. How are you going to leave a new employee at the theater alone in the front? He was like, further showing that you're not responsible enough to handle a manager position. He's like, she's saying that you didn't even teach her how to count the drawer or how to work the slushy machine. And I tell him, I'm like, well, she told me that she was fine to work there. She did not say that there was go one problem at all. She didn't say that there was nothing she, you know, didn't understand. Also, I had a whole plan lined up for Abigail to go in if she had any trouble so that way Abigail could help her. So I get to the movie theater and the cops are there, thankfully, to be honest. It was like I walked into a fucking zoo. And I know you would probably think like, dude, where's the other employees? Like, where's security? Um, yeah, we... That wasn't in the budget for us. So we did not have security or any people who worked at the theater willing to stop that chaos. And to be honest, this theater was literally like the smallest fucking theater in the world. Like I don't even know how they're still open. Like we rarely get new movies. The movies that are out came out like three months ago. And then we play those movies for about another three months until we're finally able to get the other movies in theater. So clearly, if you couldn't tell by now, I had to miss my sister's dance recital. And I was also left to clean up Melanie's mess. So I text her and I'm like, hey, like what happened tonight? I told you that you could literally text Abigail or me if you needed help. And she's like, well, I just felt like super embarrassed because I told you that I was good and that I knew what I was doing. So I didn't want to call to say that I need help. And then she also has the nerve to say, also, there was just like a lot of work for one person. So that's when I also bring up the fact that she told our manager that I didn't teach her shit. The shit that we literally worked on every single day that she was training. And she goes, well, because I don't feel like I was trained well enough, to be honest. I felt like you were really rushed and you didn't really take the time to actually explain things to me. I was literally this close to reaching through the phone and grabbing her by the throat at this point. So after that situation, I pretty much fell back and told my manager that I definitely was not going to be working any shifts with her. So he literally, literally gives her half of my shifts because she's new and she needs more experience than I do. How does that make any freaking sense? Like you would think seniority, you get more hours than somebody who's new. And because I didn't wanna work any shifts with her, I was only working like three days a week. And then all of a sudden, my manager sends in the schedule for the next two weeks. And I'm pretty much on my regular schedule that I was on before Melanie started working. I mean, I don't know. I heard through the grapevine, okay, that apparently the whole time that she was at work, she would literally just sit in the bathroom and play on her phone. And then whenever she would come out of the bathroom, she would be like, oh, I don't feel good. I need to go home. And also she straight up told my boss in the interview that she did not want to do too much work. Like she didn't want to clean dishes, clean bathrooms, do this, do that, do the next, right? So, I mean, it is a shock, but it also isn't a shock that she got hired because we're literally talking about my boss who goes into the janitor's closet just to do drugs. Like I literally wish that I was lying whenever I tell you guys this, okay? He had us come and check on him whenever he went to the janitor's closet just to make sure that he wasn't dead. Like he would come in and he would be like, uh, hey guys, you know, I'm gonna go uh, check some stuff out in the janitor's closet. Can you guys just check on me like within the next 15 minutes? really weird i mean also because there have literally been four times where he has od'd and we've had to call an ambulance for him like the one time i'm pretty sure that he was dead for seven minutes and i know you're probably wondering how the fuck is he still 
allowed to work there like allowed to be a manager well his parents own the theater so it's pretty self-explanatory at that point but also we usually just have the ambulance come around the back of the theater because we had like a little alleyway in the back and also only a few people knew about this stuff and only a few people would go to check on him like he only trusted a few of us so the word didn't really get spread around anywhere because if people would find out that he was doing drugs and he was the manager then his parents would definitely have to fire him and put somebody else's manager to not look bad in front of the town's eyes so yeah anyways pretty much she gets fired i'm on extremely thin ice but then whenever i go back to work the first day she literally calls me and asks if she can come into work also it's like maybe an hour before closing and even though she was fired i just said fuck it because i was pissed off at my manager for blaming the whole situation on me but i told her i was like listen though if anybody asks you just came in and started working and i know absolutely nothing about it got it good so fast forward she gets here and she starts apologizing like crazy and she's telling me that she's just having a really rough time because her grandma is in the hospital with cancer and she's like four or five hours away so she hasn't been able to visit her at all so obviously i feel bad for her right and i decide to forgive her and after that we actually became really good friends after school she would hop in my car and we would either go to work together or we would go to my house and hang out for a while also not to mention work became way more fun than it was before i'm not gonna lie because before you know i was like all uptight and focused on doing the best job that i could do even though my manager was literally getting high in the janitor's closet but also now i had someone to mess around with bullshit with you know and we had some really fun times okay we would play pranks on our manager 24 7 but we would play pranks specifically the ones to make him think that he was going insane yeah i know we're messed up it is what it is though right right anyways like the one day he came in and he went to his office but he left his car keys on the counter so while I watched the front, Melanie took his car keys and went outside and moved his car. She literally moved it like two streets down. So, you know, he came back out. You could definitely tell that, you know, he did something in there. So this was the best time to mess with him, right? So, you know, he's like, hey girls, have you seen my keys? We give him his keys. And then he goes outside and not even two seconds later, he comes in and he's like, guys, Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Someone stole my car. Someone stole my car. And he was literally bawling his eyes out, okay? So, you know, at this point, Melanie and I are feeling a little, a little bit bad, okay? So, Melanie and I are like, well, we can go and look for it if you stay here and watch the front. And he's like, what makes you think that you two can find it? over me just going and looking for my car and that's when we made up some elaborate story about how our phones can track cars if we just have the license plate number and the vin number you know we can track where they're going because all cars have gps's in them literally a whole bunch of bullshit well he ends up believing the bullshit and long story short he watched the front for about six hours and during those six hours melanie and i had went and got something to eat went to my house and watched tv and then whenever we came back we were like hey found your car it was in the middle of some bad neighborhood, you know, it was really sketchy. And he's like, oh my God, thank you girls so much. Thank you girls so much. And then he gives us both $100 for apparently being such honorable and dedicated employees. Anyway, so summertime rolls around. And during the summertime, everybody wants to work at the movie theaters. I don't know what it is, but, well, actually I do know what it is. Because one, it's super laid back here. Like it really is. Like. Our manager, yeah, you know, there was a few times where, you know, he'll get on our asses. But, like, other than that, he does not care. And he's the only one in charge. It's not like anybody else comes in to check on us. It's not like there's, like, two managers. And number two, you never had to pay to go see a movie that came out three months ago. So, people also love this because now, since it's summertime, they can start taking people on dates for free. Like, I kid you not, there was a guy who worked at the movie theater the summer before just so that way he could take girls on dates like after his shift was over he brought in a different girl every single freaking day to this movie theater for free 
I mean, period, I guess. So we ended up hiring four new people. There was an older lady who just wanted to do janitorial work. And then someone else who also just wanted to do janitorial work. But then there were these two guys, Alex and Brandon. And they were both a year older than Melanie and I. And they were also best friends. And they also just wanted this job so that way they could screw around and do whatever they wanted. So two days before these boys got hired, Melanie and her family got a hotel hotel five hours away close to the hospital that her grandma was staying at so that way they could finally go and see her so at this time it was only brandon alex and i and we all hit it off like right away literally right away especially alex and i him and i were like two peas in a pod inseparable anytime that we were together we were laughing smiling joking around and that was literally about two days after working with him only two days after work you know, after everything was cleaned up, we were done. We would usually just get a big thing of popcorn and we would go and watch one of the movies. And I have this issue where I get too attached to people, right? So I usually try to keep my guard up for a while. Quick interjection here. I know exactly what she means because I don't know if it's my mommy issues or whatever it is, but I get attached to people too quickly. It could be people I have a crush on. It could be people that I am best friends with, you know, anybody. So usually I have to keep my distance literally for a while before I actually like let my walls down so that way, you know, my feelings can go crazy. It's weird. Let me know if any of you guys struggle with the same thing because that was a very vulnerable moment for me. Anyway, so like I said, you know, keeping my guard up. But after like three weeks, I finally decided that it was a good time to let myself like him, you know? I mean, I already liked him, but what I did was I pretty much crumpled up all of those feelings about him and I stuffed them at the bottom of a freaking dumpster inside of my head. So, and you know what? That was really hard for me, by the way, because right after I met him, he was throwing out hints that he liked me and Loki wanted to date me literally like the one night he's like oh you and I should go out bowling and I was like oh like is Brandon gonna come too and he was like well if you really want Brandon to come on our first date you know we can do that but personally I just think that's a little bit weird so you know he was kind of like you know being cute but I did end up going on this date, okay? And we had a really, really, really good time, okay? No awkwardness or anything except for whenever he drove me home. And as soon as he parked the car, you know, he was like, all right, you know, like I had a really good time with you. And he went in for the kiss. As soon as he went like this, I literally jumped out the car and I was like, bye. Awkward. <laughs> and I was so upset because I couldn't tell Melanie about any of this because she was literally staying in the middle of nowhere. So when I would try to call and text her, nothing would go through. So she could only call off of her grandma's phone in the hospital. But the last time that her mom caught her doing that, she got her phone taken away, even though her phone wasn't really even usable. So I finally get a text from my manager and he's like, hey, Melanie's on her way back. So I'm only gonna be putting you on for two days this next week. So that way we can give her some good hours. So after that week, he ended up putting me on only two days a week for the next few weeks after that, which was Mondays and Fridays. And I was super upset because I didn't work with Alex, Brandon or Melanie. Like we had no shifts together. They all three were put together, but I wasn't put with them. Also, Melanie still didn't have her phone and she was grounded. So I hadn't talked to her since she got caught talking to me on the phone in her grandma's room. Well, finally our schedules all go back to normal and I was put back on the shift with Melanie, Alex and Brandon, period. And as soon as Melanie and I see each other, we are very deep into a conversation about about everything that's been going on in each other's lives when all of a sudden she blurts out and she's like oh my god and I have something to tell you I like Alex damn it damn it that's what I have to say about that so now I'm sitting there and the smile that was on my face has pretty much melted off she definitely noticed and she was like oh my god what does he have a girlfriend no but he was about to and I was like no and then she was like well what is it and I'm like this was so shallow of me. I'm not even gonna lie. Yes, I was shallow for doing this, okay? But it didn't even work, so I don't think it should count as me being 
that type of person. I was like, well, summer's almost over and him and Brandon are going home soon. Like he's only down here visiting his dad for the summer. So I think it would be pointless to get into a relationship with him. And she looks at me like I just fucking ran over her dog. She's like, and she goes, I really thought you would be way more supportive than this. Like sure he's going back home, but that doesn't mean we couldn't do long distance. And yes, I know long distance usually doesn't work, but what's the harm in trying? So at that point, I realized I'm not going to win. So I take the L and I'm like, you know what? Screw it. If you're happy, Melanie, and you really like him, you should date him. Also, you two would make a real cute couple. <laughs> so later on, I'm cleaning up and Melanie had just got picked up by her parents and it was only Alex and I. And I'm not gonna lie, things between Alex and I have been super, 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 super awkward since Melanie started working with us. It was mainly because we didn't hang out as much and we didn't talk as much. It was mainly him and Melanie, you know, who were like this now. Which I can also say though, it's definitely partially 90% my fault because I tend to distance myself from people without realizing it whenever I feel like I'm put on the back burner. It's just like um, a safety mechanism for me, you know? So that way I don't get hurt. That's what it is. It's a really bad habit, but keeps my feelings from getting hurt. Yeah. So while I'm cleaning up the Slurpee machine, he comes over to help and there's like a really awkward silence until he looks at me and he's like, what's wrong with you? Okay, buddy. First of all, not a good idea to say that because I was on my period and I took that in a very offensive way. Not a good choice of words. I was like, what are you talking about? What's wrong with me? You're so rude. Like, why would you say that? And he's like, no, I mean like, why haven't you been talking to me? I'm confused. We were all good until Melanie got here. And then you just started acting super weird with me. And then he's also like, I've been trying to call and text you, which yes, I forgot to mention that to you guys, mainly because I didn't want it to look like it was my fault. Okay. That communication got cut off between both of us. Again, another, Coping mechanism, safety, safety. Nobody likes to have their fucking feelings hurt. So I'm like, well, I figured things would just get weird. And he's like, what are you talking about? Things would get weird. And I ended up just telling him that Melanie liked him, which was really fucking annoying because I would rather be confessing my feelings for him instead of my best friend's feelings that she had for him. And yes, I still had a lot of feelings for him, but Melanie beat me to the punch. She did. And you know what? I know if I would have told her that I liked him first, she would have done the exact same for me. So after that conversation, things were pretty much done between Alex and I, right? After that, the only time that we would talk was if it was about work or if Melanie was also a part of the conversation that involved both of us. And eventually, Alex did end up asking her out. He asked her if she wanted to go to the movies and then he got her a teddy bear from the gas station. He took me bowling. I just wanna put that out there. Okay, I know I'm being bitter. I know I'm being bitter, but I'm in my feels right now. That's why. So let me grieve in peace. So fast forward, Melanie is literally talking my freaking ear off every single day or every single time that she has a chance to talk to me about how much her and Alex are getting along and how sweet he is and how he took her virginity in the back of his car the first night that they went on that date. And then he went home three days later. Literally after that, all Melanie did was eat, sleep, and breathe FaceTime with Alex. It was sad. She would talk to him while she was working. She would literally have one AirPod in and she would be talking to customers being like, oh yeah, like, do you want sauce with that? While on the phone with him. And eventually our manager told her she had to stop being on her phone so much. So what did she do? She fucking quit. Just so she could be on FaceTime with Alex. Also, Alex lived, hmm, I don't know, 12 hours away. And not to mention, you know, I was put on the back burner, you know. Well, come winter time, her and Alex are having issues. So now she wants to talk to me. Obviously, I wasn't gonna shut her out, okay? Because she was still my best friend. I didn't replace her or anything, even though I should've, because 
At this point, I'm feeling used. So she was telling me about how they would make plans to FaceTime and then he wouldn't FaceTime her and some days he just wouldn't text her at all. But she would go on Snapchat and check his location. You know how you can see like um, on people's location, if, they're, if they have their locations on on Snapchat, this person was on Snapchat like two minutes ago. Yeah, that's what she would look for. And whenever he turned his location off, she would check his Snap score. Yes his snap score. She was one of those girls. But honestly, nothing wrong with one of the being one of those girls. Like nothing wrong with that. All I'm saying is just that she was becoming very 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 obsessed because it's only January, sis. Y'all been together for 5 months. Not only that, she has all the passwords to all of his social medias. She forced him to download Life360 so that way she could have his location all the time. Like we were literally only 16 years old and she's already in a toxic ass relationship. And not to mention controlling, controlling. And he did not do any of that controlling ass shit to her. He didn't have her social media passwords. He didn't care who she hung out with. If she said she couldn't talk, he was completely fine with that. So we could definitely say that Melanie was the toxic, aggressor slash controlling one in the relationship which kind of made sense because she low-key was a little bit controlling in our friendship as well so i could definitely see that whenever you know started to catch on to their relationship and he had never cheated on her or anything like that also just want to put that out there you know she wasn't crazy because he cheated on her or anything she just had a lot of insecurities that she pushed onto him but back to the you know controlling part you know i'll give you an example of like you know our friendship and how she was controlling the one night we were gonna go on a double date with these two guys okay and i walk out to her car and i'm wearing a red tank top with a pair of jeans and she's like you can't wear that I was gonna wear that. I was gonna wear something like that. You have to take it off. So I'm like, what the, what the fuck, what? So, you know, I go back upstairs. I change, I come back down and she's like, wait, I think I wanna wear something like that. Can you change back into the other thing? And I'm like, nope. And then she literally had to fit the whole night and she said that she didn't wanna go, so we didn't go. Well, eventually Melanie comes over to my house the one night, right? And she's crying freaking out saying that her and Alex broke up. He broke up with her. He pretty much told her that he couldn't handle her anymore. He was done with having to worry about her getting upset with him because he didn't answer one of her text messages fast enough or stay on the phone with her while he would be in school all the way to when he would have dinner with his family. Which you guys know that, you know, football season starts earlier in the year. Well, I guess that literally like a month or two or whenever football season started, which wasn't that long after they got together, she would literally tell him, you have to FaceTime me while you're at football pla practice. And he would be like, but I can't do that. I can't run around with the fucking phone in my hand. She's like, well then put me on the bench and flip the phone over so that way nobody sees. Because she was worried about him talking to cheerleaders. I'm pretty sure the cheerleaders aren't even at guys football practice. I mean, I don't know how that works, but still. So then she's like, do you think that you could talk to him for me? Like, I'm so upset right now. And I told her that I wasn't going to talk to him about it. I wasn't going to get involved. And to be honest, I read the big paragraphs that he sent her. He really did not want anything to do with her. So, you know, Melanie is super upset for the next few months. Um, April rolls around and she has a new boyfriend who we're going to call Lucas. Okay. It was a super odd couple to be honest because he was nothing like Alex. Alex was super tall, muscular, tall, dark, and handsome. I think that's that would be the words. And Lucas was short, skinny, and yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's really nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying I wasn't expecting her to go for him. Okay. So fast forward to the summer before our senior year. Lucas and Melanie are still dating, obviously. Actually, they have a really healthy relationship compared to Melanie and Alex's relationship. I mean, it's probably because it's not long distance, but I'll give Melanie props. She has definitely matured in the relationship slash trust department, but I'm still working at the movie theaters. And last summer, the boys did not come back to the movie theater i don't even know if they came back to visit but yeah so i wasn't expecting them to come back this year which i wasn't really focused on boys at this time okay i was focused on school and making my money 
period. Well, it comes that time whenever school gets out and everybody is trying to get a job at the movie theaters. So my manager starts hiring people and a few days later, I walk into work and I hear a really familiar voice coming from the men's bathroom. So I go around the counter, I put my apron on and and I'm like watching the men's like bathroom door like a freaking hawk waiting for whoever it is to come out of that bathroom because I remembered the boys, but I just couldn't put a face to the voice that I was hearing. Well then, all of a sudden, Alex and Brandon walk out of the bathroom. By the way, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but Alex and Brandon are both brothers. Just wanted to put that out there. But things were super, super, super awkward because Alex and I hadn't talked since him and Melanie got together, which I think was like maybe a year and a half ago by now. I think that, I don't know. I'm too lazy to figure out the timeline. But he comes around to our station and we were put together to work on the popcorn and icy machine because my manager was like, things are too messy around here. We need more organization. That's what'll make us all work harder and better. Like, you're gonna do whatever. He goes on these tangents 24 seven. Anyway, so like I said, things are super awkward, but you know what? Once again, Alex being his funny charismatic self, he knew how to break the ice. And also, can I just mention that he, I thought he was hot before. No, 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 no. Um, yeah, he got way, way better looking than the last time, to be honest. Now I could consider his old self a three and his new self like an 11. I don't even know how that's possible in, within a year and a half. And eventually things are back to how they were before. I mean, he did tell me his side of the breakup though, like everything that Melanie didn't tell me. But I will say that Melanie told me most of the truth, you know, instead of trying to make herself look better in the situation but he did say that he didn't really have feelings for her anymore like for how much she liked him versus how much he liked her it just wasn't mutual so eventually i asked him hey like does melanie know you're back in town and then he told me that he had to block her on everything because she wouldn't stop blowing up his phone she literally would call him off of random numbers so he had to get his phone number changed um she wouldn't stop logging in and out of his snapchat and instagram because she still had the passwords and everything and her email was hooked up to the shit so he had to delete his instagram and snapchat so i guess the short answer would be no she does not know that alex is in town but now i feel super weird okay because on one hand i don't want to tell melanie that alex is here i want to keep alex all to myself and that's what i want but on the other hand i also feel obligated to tell her because her ex-boyfriend and i are now working together devil angel out of here so i do end up calling melanie that night and i tell her that he's working back at the movie theaters and the line literally goes silent for two minutes all i can hear is her breathing like it sounded like she was hyperventilating slash going to pass out so two minutes later i'm like mel are you okay and she's like yeah i'm fine i'm gonna call you in the morning click that's all nothing else so fast forward the next day at work melanie never called me not once. And as soon as I walk into work, I see Melanie talking to my manager. And he's like, Melanie's invited back here, but I want you to keep a very strict eye on her because I want to make sure that no weird shit's going on. And he pretty much meant like her and Alex like doing the nasty anywhere or being gross together because he knew all the tea about them being together and then them being broken up, you know, because like we tell him everything, duh. But now I'm super nervous because I don't know if Alex is going to strangle me or quit and go home. And I'm actually super pissed off. Like this girl has literally been fired three times or she quit. I don't, I don't know. She's been back and forth so many times and yet we're going to give her another chance to work here. What the fuck? So as soon as my manager walks away, I pretty much go over to Melanie and I'm like, why are you back here? I thought you don't want to work here anymore. And she goes, wow, I thought you'd be way happier like that I'm back here to work with you. So I cool down and I'm like, no, no, like I'm happy to see you. It's just like, why? Like, you know, I thought you hated it here. Are you back here, sis? Like why the sudden change of heart? She was like, well, I wish I could say that I came back for you, but I actually came back so that way I could talk to Alex. Like I wanted to get some closure. I just need closure between Alex and I because I never got that. Did you know that 
he blocked me right after he broke up with me over text like he couldn't even wait until he came again in the summer to break up with me how rude so i'm like yeah i completely understand completely 100 percent. and then alex walks into work and he sees me and melanie talking and i think he already realized what was going on once he saw melanie putting on an apron so he goes and he lifts up his phone and looks at me and he's like look at your text messages and melanie saw it and she was low-key weirded out like she looked at me and she was like <laughs> okay and then he texted me he was like why the fuck is melanie here and i'm like well i she found out you were in town that's why she found out you were here i was like she'll most likely quit in a week she just said that she needs some closure from your guys' relationship. And he's like, I don't know what closure she needs because literally back in October, the first time that I tried to break up with her, she threatened to off herself. And the second time I tried to break up with her, she threatened to off herself again, but she told me this time, my blood will be on your hands because I'm not telling anybody else. So now I'm really starting to understand why he did not want her to know that he was back in town. So now I feel like, you know, the bad person here. So before our manager leaves, um, the new groups were assigned, right? And it was Alex and Melanie assigned to the front. And it was Brandon and I assigned to the ticket booth. And Melanie was all excited, you know, she's like, <laughs> until Alex runs up to the manager and he's like, um, yeah, I'm not working with her crazy ass i don't feel comfortable around her so he's like can you please put me with someone else and you know our manager starts looking with me and him back and forth he's like and he's like all right brandon and melanie um you two work the front and you and alex work at the ticket booth so now melanie is being super weird okay because like in the movie theater right i don't even know how to really like do this okay so here is the um the snack thing you know like where they work you know the counter and then there's a wall right here okay and around that wall you walk around that wall to get to the ticket booth you know where we check the tickets and stuff so she kept going to the ladies restroom so that way she could keep walking around us and keeping an eye on us and every time that she passed us she would literally give me the side eye like like that so at that point i just said screw it i'm gonna have a good time no matter what i don't care we were having such a good time we were laughing smiling you know joking around i want to just date him already so anyways so that night the boys drive home and it's only melanie and i cleaning up and she comes over to me and she's like why didn't you answer my text message and i'm like because i was working and she goes oh well I didn't know that work was so important to you also you know how i feel about alex so i don't know why you would even talk to him so i'm like i'm sorry i didn't know that it was such a big deal to you because you're with lucas now and she was like well it doesn't matter because i am with lucas but i'm just saying like he's weird why would you talk to him ew so after that Fast forward a few days, Alex and I are working at the same station again, and Melanie and him did end up having a talk. He ended up had an hour talk with her, you know, giving her closure, pretty much just talking about why the relationship ended, you know? So after that, they decide that they can be friends again, which is awesome. Good. I'm happy about that because I'm tired of this. But Melanie starts to notice that Alex and I aren't just friends. We just don't feel friendly towards each other because the one night she texted me she was like i know you like alex and i'm like what are you what are you talking about like what the fuck and she's like i know you're lying but like you can date him if you want like i'm i'm okay with it i don't care so i really feel weird i feel like this is a trap this is 110 percent a trap so i feel like i shouldn't date him because this might be a trap and alex did ask me to go on a date but i didn't tell melanie about it even though she said that we can date because i just was not going to get into it with her because i had a feeling like i said that that was a fucking trap so alex takes me to the same bowling alley that we went to the first time you know it was kind of like our special place you know and while we were there he asked me to be his girlfriend yes he asked me to be his girlfriend so i like kind of hesitated about it because of melanie i was like yeah no i'm not sure if that's such a good idea like i don't want to hurt melanie's feelings she wouldn't do this to me and he was like well i already asked melanie so there should be no problem she said that she supported us being in a relationship so on that note i said yes 
because I have literally had a crush on this kid since I first saw him working at the movie theaters, okay? And last summer, I was super upset whenever they did not come back, you know, for the summer. He was pretty much the only thing that I could look forward to that whole year. Of course, after my best friend and him broke up. <laughs> and I know that sounds super pathetic, you know, that he's like the only guy that I could think about it. But let me put this out there for you. It's just something about the boys that don't go to your school that makes them superior to the boys that actually go to your school. Okay? Makes sense? It does. So the next day I get to work and I run up to Melanie and I'm like, I said yes. And she's like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, I said yes to Alex. You know, he asked me out. And she's like, oh my god. I can't believe you went on a fucking date with him. And then you have the nerve to just walk up to me and tell me that you two are in a relationship. And I was like, well, Alex told me that you said it was okay. And she's like, Alex never asked me shit. And then she picks up all of her stuff and walks out for the day. She's done for the day. So now I'm super upset with Alex and I confront him about it. And he goes, I just don't want to waste time being friends with you for the rest of the summer. All because you're too worried about Melanie's feelings. So I 100% agree with him at this point. I'm like, all right, you're right. I'll let you have this one, you're right. But then in the morning when I woke up, I get a text from Melanie apologizing to me. Apologizing, yes. She says that she's sorry for overreacting and it just hit her hard because Alex was the guy that she lost her virginity to. And then two days later, she breaks up with Lucas. So I was kind of weirded out by that. And when I asked her why, she was like, well, I just don't have feelings for him anymore, to be honest, you know? And I'm like, no, I don't. It was sus, it really was. And she was like, to be honest, he was more like a rebound. Since that rebound lasted a year and a half, almost two years. That was not a fucking rebound. Anyway, so, you know, she seems super supportive and everything, so it's a little bit easier for me to tell her about, you know, Alex and I. Obviously, I don't overshare anything, and obviously, I don't talk about him 24-7. Well, the one night Alex is supposed to come and pick me up, right? And, uh, we're supposed to go on a date, we're supposed to go to a museum, and then we're supposed to go out to eat with his parents. So, Melanie's over my house before... I leave, you know, and I go on this date and I walk out of the bathroom and the outfit that I had picked and she's like, oh my God, you cannot wear that. And I'm like, why? And she goes, well, he doesn't like those types of dresses. Also, you're wearing way too much makeup. He likes more of natural girls and the heels. That's whenever I cut this bitch off, okay? Mm, fuck no. I'm like, okay, I get that you dated him, but can I just figure out what he likes on my own? And she goes, I mean, I'm just saying, like, unless you want to end up dumped like me, you should probably listen to what I have to say. I mean, I know what he likes. He dated me first. Thanks, Captain Obvious. So, you know, she left and I was feeling super insecure, you know, but I went out with everything that I had on, didn't change one thing, and Alex complimented me the whole night. So, ha. So fast forward, um, Melanie somehow got these shifts switched around, you know, and I was working at the ticket booth by myself while it was her, Brandon, and Alex all up at the front working at the counter. And anytime that I would have to go to the front, she would literally be like, you know, ha ha ha, Alex, oh my God, you're so funny, you know? And she'd, she would like hold his wrist while she's talking to him. She'd be like, oh my God, listen to this. So I get out of work earlier than everybody else and Melanie needs a ride home the one night. So she asked Alex if he can take her home. And of course my lovely boyfriend says yes. And as soon as they get to her house, she has no hesitation being like, I wanna get back together with you. Like throwing herself a pity party. Alex, I love you. Please give me a second chance. I was young and I was dumb and I didn't know what I was doing. I'm so sorry I hurt you. Blah, blah, blah. And he tells her, I don't want to be with you. I don't like you. But instead of just taking the L, she literally climbs on top of him while he's in the driver's seat and starts making out with him. Trying to make out with him at least. You know, he's like, get the fuck off of me, bitch. And Alex's dad was an Uber driver and he had one of those um, dash cams, you know, looking outside of the car, but also one that recorded the inside of the car. So this was all on tape. And then Melanie tried texting me right after and she's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Alex literally just tried to hook up with me and just tried to say that, you know, he wanted us to get back together. And the only reason why he's been dating you is to make me jealous. I tried to tell you that he's a bad person and you just didn't listen to me, but it's okay. I just think you need to break up with him. I mean, unless you're okay with him, 
trying to make out with you know your best friend so after that i call alex and alex is telling me the complete opposite of what she said you know that it was her saying all this stuff and that it was her who made out with him blah 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 so i blocked them fucking both because i just like i didn't care i really did not care at this point okay like you two have whatever fucked up relationship you got going on keep that shit over there so eventually i was fine and dandy with working the ticket booth alone i did not give one and alex would try to talk to me and then melanie whenever she would see that alex tried to talk to me she would talk try to talk to me you know but i guess around um christmas time alex's dad had been looking through the um dash cam footage and i guess he found that little excursion that happened with melanie and alex and also alex is not in high school at this time he's in college and he comes to my house during christmas break he literally comes to my house knocks on the door and he's like i have something to show you like can i talk to you so he shows me the video of what happened which you know what bravo alex like the fact that he literally still was like low-key fighting for me over those few months and didn't just see the video and be like well that's a loss whatever it is what it is no he came to my house so then, you know, Alex and I are back together. Uh, and then I send the video to Melanie and I'm like, what the fuck is this? I was like, I thought that he was the one who tried to get with you. She was like, dude, you're such a freaking weirdo. She was like, why do you have a video of me making out with your boyfriend on your phone? She was like, this is definitely CP and I'm reporting you. Okay, sis, whatever you say. So then I just didn't answer that message, right? And then she goes, if you don't delete that video, I'm going to off myself. So I'm like, go ahead. I don't give a fuck. I literally, I said that in a text. And then she says that I'm bullying her and harassing her. Yeah. So I got expelled my senior year because of that shit. But Alex and I are still together. We're actually engaged. And we have a four-year-old son. So suck it, Melanie. Okay, everyone, that is the end of today's story time. If you guys like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of me, maybe hit that subscribe button down below. And if you guys want to send in your anonymous story time or you want to know how to send in your anonymous story time, make sure to click the links down below in the description. But without further ado, I will see you guys next Saturday with a new story time.